here are our top stories. Thousands weighed in and Tri-County says masks are a go in schools in Adams, Arapaho and Douglas counties. The majority of children will be just fine with masks. But will the districts comply and what some parents have to say about it? The vaccine's effectiveness seems to be waning a little bit over time. The federal government gearing up to announce vaccine boosters for all Americans. I would absolutely get a booster if it's recommended. What you need to know about the extra dose and who will need them first. Plus, chaos continues at Kabul airport. They are facilitating flights for our allies and partners to get citizens and others out of Afghanistan. The race to evacuate Afghan citizens after the Taliban takeover. Colorado communities are eager to help refugees who come to our state. Really, really need help in every aspect of their lives. How you can help and what resources are available to those refugees in need. Hello and thank you for joining us for Denver 7 on Local 3 tonight. I'm Jacqueline Allen. Jessica has the evening off. After two days of public hearings and thousands of comments, Tri-County Health will now require children 11 and younger to wear masks. That includes students in Arapaho, Adams and Douglas County Schools. Just into our newsroom, Douglas County Schools will comply and they will require students to wear masks starting August 23rd. Denver 7's Addie Guajardo has been following this story all day and tonight she is fact checking, checking some of the parents' concerns. It looks like the motion did not pass. The Dry County Health Department shot down a motion to mandate masks at all schools across Arapahoe, Adams and Douglas County. Six votes in favor and two against. But approved a public health order which will require masks for kids between 2 and 11 years old in all indoor school settings. That includes any adult in contact with them. We appreciate the members of the public who have shared their opinions with us and please recognize that we will continue to monitor the spread of COVID within our schools and, and consider modifying our order accordingly. The decision took two days. A Tri-County Health Department survey shows of roughly 11,000 people who weighed in on mask requirements at schools, 31% supported masks in indoor settings, 8% supported masks in settings with kids 11 and younger, and 62% did not support masks in schools under any circumstances. Hundreds of parents weighed in on both sides, and to help fact check their concerns, we turned to Dr. Steve Federico, the Director of General Pediatrics of Denver Health. I will remind you that no child in Colorado has died of COVID. That's false. One of the youngest Coloradans to die of COVID-19 was 15 years old. Unfortunately, the Delta variant has changed the equation um, in that the Delta variant uh, is absolutely more transmissible. So more people are getting COVID than before, and children are no exception. Another parent said masks impacted her daughter's mental health. Pre-pandemic, my child was happy. She went from that to contemplating suicide and masks contributed greatly. The mental health issues that are associated with this current time do not have anything to do with masking and they have everything to do with social isolation. And the best way to mitigate that for kids is to get them back in schools. And the safest way to do that and to make it happen over time is to have the masking. Some parents also claims masks simply don't work. The CDC continues to point to the vast amount of scientific evidence that masks are incredibly effective at reducing the transmission of COVID. And anybody that says otherwise is incorrect. Now we also took a closer look at school districts that fall within the Tri-County Health Department, Aurora Public Schools, and also Cherry Creek Public Schools, and Adams 12 five-star public schools already had mask requirements in place. Less than an hour ago, Douglas County School District announced that they will follow this public health order that goes into effect August 23rd. Now, we did reach out to Littleton Schools, public schools. We're waiting to hear back. Reporting live in Denver, Addie Guajardo, Denver 7. Thanks, Addie. We will be interested to hear what they have to say. All right, masks will soon be required at all Denver schools, both public and private, as well as all child care facilities. The city just announced the order, which will go into effect tomorrow. COVID-19 cases among children are on the rise. The American Academy of Pediatrics is reporting more than 121,000 cases among children under 18 last week. That accounts for 18% of all U.S. cases, and that's also up 5% from the week before. Kids still make up a very small percentage of hospitalizations, though, the vast majority still being older Americans. Jefferson County students and staff returned to class today fully masked up. Superintendent Tracy Dorland tells us this wasn't exactly how she wanted to start the semester, but if it keeps kids in class, 
she's all for it. There is some hesitancy and some worry and some concern about decisions that we've made. And I understand that um, and I get it. And I don't love everything we're having to do right now in regard to the pandemic, um, but we're doing it so that we can prioritize in-person learning. We can keep our kids, our students and everyone in our building safe. And we can try to avoid quarantines and make sure we keep our school doors open this year. Jeffco has masks ready for students who show up without them. Medical exceptions will be considered, religious ones will not. The TSA has confirmed to Denver 7 that the mask mandate will extend into January. Both CNN and Reuters are reporting an announcement about the extension will be made in the coming days. That mandate covers all public transportation. That includes airports, planes and buses. It was set to expire in September. Tomorrow, President Biden is expected to advise a COVID-19 booster shot for most Americans. Now, even before that happens, there are still many questions about a third shot or even a second shot if you've had the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn went looking for answers. Among those already vaccinated, there seems to be some willingness to get a third shot, a COVID booster, as doctors are calling it. I would absolutely get a booster if it's recommended. My siblings are really young, so yeah, I definitely would if it was what was going to be the safest option for me and for, you know, the, my environment, I guess. As cases of the Delta variant surge, the Biden administration appears poised to recommend a booster to most Americans, a shot you would get about eight months after being fully vaccinated. The idea here is that over time, immunity to the coronavirus will diminish. Dr. James Nide is the director of infectious disease at the Medical Center of Aurora and says a booster is simply another dose. It's just simply a third shot or a second shot of the J&J. &J. It's the same vaccine. The immunocompromised and elderly would likely be at the top of the list for a booster, which could be readily available by mid to late September. And if you are high risk to begin with, you're probably the most likely to be at the front of the line for a booster recommendation. But Dr. Nide warns the messaging right now should largely be focused around getting the unvaccinated vaccinated. The booster is secondary to him. Right now, on the ground, the overwhelming majority of hospitalized cases are in the unvaccinated. In fact, at the Medical Center of Aurora, 90% of new hospitalizations are unvaccinated individuals. And Dr. Nide says people are still dying daily. It's still getting the unvaccinated to get a shot in the arm. That's the way this um, epidemic pandemic comes under control. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. By request of Governor Polis, everyone working in hospitals and nursing homes will be required to receive at least one dose of the vaccine by September 30th. The governor's request does not become reality, though, until the sta state health department finalizes some new rules, and we do expect that to happen soon. For the latest updates on anything and everything related to the vaccine, be sure to visit the denverchannel.com slash vaccine. Turning now to the desperate effort to escape Afghanistan, tens of thousands of people are frantically looking for a way out. Some served alongside U.S. forces or worked as journalists. Many are women and children. They have no reason to feel safe under Taliban rule. The Pentagon says more than 700 people have already been evacuated, and they expect to get between five and 9,000 people out per day. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez tonight on the resources available here in Colorado and how you can help. No matter how many years pass, for someone who comes to the U.S. as a refugee, it's an unforgettable experience. I came as a refugee myself when I was a kid, and I know my heart goes out to them. And, um, and, I, and I know how it struggles that my family lived, you know, came here. Layli Hashim was a refugee from Afghanistan years ago. Now she dedicates her time helping other refugees through her work at the North Metro Islamic Center and as a translator. There's times that you will cry with them as well while you're interpreting, and there will be times that, you know, you're going to be support for them. As thousands of people flee Afghanistan, searching for a better life, their arrival to the U.S. presents a whole new set of challenges. It is challenging at first. You know, they have limited resources in regards to how much time they have in order to be um, self-sufficient or on their own. There are three primary agencies in Colorado that accept these refugees, each offering five years of assistance before turning them loose to fend off for themselves. Where Project Warthor comes into play as we work in partnership with those resettlement agencies because we offer programs such as our dental clinic for their first dental visit. 
Um, we work in partnership with Emily Griffith Technical School, um, where we teach English as a second language out of our building. After arriving, refugees will be referred to different clinics for their first medical evaluations. Many of these clinics are already preparing for more refugees to come through their doors. We've been sort of anticipating that there's going to be higher numbers of arrivals. Kind of just like laying the foundation for like, hey, get ready, start preparing yourself. There's going to be a lot more referrals coming in. Families will then be given a place to stay, but have to find what they need to furnish it, making it even more important for the community to get involved and donate. We have uh, families come every week, about 10, 15 families come and there are these refugee families, the new arrivals, and they come and they pick whatever they need for the house. Laylee knows how important each item can be for families, and she will tell you the demand for the bare necessities, a bed, a table, a chair, is about to skyrocket once again. The North Metro Islamic Center is accepting donations. Some of the most needed items are diapers, school supplies, and household items. Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. And plenty of Denver 7 viewers are reaching out asking, how can I help the people in Afghanistan? Our Denver 7 digital team has been working to form an in-depth list of ways that you can help, from donating funds to get people to America, to giving time and helping at local refugee organizations. You can find our entire list right now on the DenverChannel.com. This man came walking right up to the house we had never seen opened the door, walked right in. A burglar strikes in broad daylight and the victims take matters into their own hands. You shouldn't let somebody else decide how your lifestyle is going to be in your own home. How they managed to track down their culprit. Mid-90s again today, but this cold front means cooler weather and showers and thunderstorms. And new home prices getting even higher for one Colorado town. What we're looking at now is an additional fifteen to $25,000 that new residents are going to have to pay. The planned upgrades for Castle Rock and why the town wants newcomers to foot the bill.